So Radio Winchcombe, let's say hello to the Shadow Boxers. So guys, I've heard lots about you, uh, and first I'd love to chat about actually how you were discovered, because uh, that was actually being discovered by the legend that is, Mr. Justin Timberlake. So how did that actually uh, all come about? Well, we were living in Atlanta, and after touring for two years with a group called the Indigo Girls, which is a folk harmony duo, we had toured with them, we had been their backing band, and we had also been playing out in Atlanta a lot. So we had a lot of show experience under our belt, written a bunch of songs, but we had a tough time finding a way to access uh, people. So we decided to do a cover series on YouTube where every month we would put out a cover that we would re a song that we would reinterpret and make our own. One of our choices was Pusher Love Girl, and which is Justin Timberlake's song off his album, The 2020 Experience. And somehow, Justin saw that cover, and he tweeted about it. He reached out to us personally, gave Adam a phone call, and uh, came through on his tour, took us out to dinner, told us he wanted to mentor us. Then, wow. three years later, he went in the studio with us for two, two and a half weeks. We recorded our EP, Apollo, and now we're the opening act on his worldwide tour. That's incredible. You must pinch yourself at times. Uh, and musically, I find there are a lot of actually uh, similarities with you both. Uh, so I guess musically you have a lot in common, which is probably why you work so well uh, together. I yeah. mean, yeah, that's, that was one of the first conversations we had, was that he, he, he saw the YouTube cover that we did uh, of his song, but then he also did a sort of deep dive into the rest of our cover catalog, and he saw that we... You know, also like Frank Ocean as much as we like Paul Simon, as much as we like Haim, and as much as we like Tame Impala. So. And who as a band uh, actually inspires you? The Bee Gees, Michael Jackson, Prince, Earth, Wind & Fire, Stevie Wonder. Those are constant influences for us that have, that have kind of served as D'Angelo also, that have sort of served as the baseline of our interest, the well that we always will pull from. Yeah. And one of the things about Stop that I, I love and that we love is that it pulls from all of that stuff, um, but does so in a, in, a, in a way that is still surprising and feels very new and exciting. And, um, and that's kind of what we want to represent. We want to we wanna be a band that, that uh, pulls from those influences and does so in a modern way. Well, guys, I've got to say, uh, I discovered you guys earlier in the week, and your harmonies are just beautiful. Uh, when you sing as one, it's fantastic, and I kind of got that, you know, that Bee Gees vibe, that falsetto, uh, and you know you get when you listen to those bands and you get goosebumps. I got that from actually listening to you guys. Wow, thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you, man. So when you actually first got together, did you realize then that you had something special? When you started singing together, were you like, hang on, we've actually got something really good here? Yeah, I think we really did know that our, <clears throat> our voices blend well together. And that was, that was day one, second one. We knew we had a great blend. Um, over the years, we have experimented with putting our voices together in various formations. And as we've been writing songs and seeing the way we react to them and other people react to them, we've realized that kind of in a soul R&B world, uh, when we put our voices in a higher falsetto place like the Bee Gees do, is kind of a, a, oftentimes in our sweet spot. So the uh, we were never trying to copy that. It, it organically happened the w that way, and our voices um, gravitated towards these places that harken back to the Bee Gees and Earth, Wind and & Fire uses those harmonies. Even Crosby, Stills & Nash at times, which is a different genre, but still the same principle. It's it's just been a it's just been a fun way to to approach vocals as a band. We have thrice the options so how long have you guys actually known each other did you go to school together did you grow up together nine ten years we've known each other well that must actually help the fact that you've known each other for so long but i also wanted to talk to you about uh, the attention that you guys are getting from some of the industry's biggest leaders who are dubbing you the next big thing so how does that feel when you get that kind of attention from some of the leading experts uh, of the music industry i mean it's it's certainly helps support you know our belief in ourselves um, but it also lets us know that we got to work harder to get to that level as well because we're uh, you know we're not there yet but we're uh, we're working our butts off to get there one of the things about us is I feel like we're never we're never going to be satisfied in 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 the sense that we're workers we 
we've spent a lot of years grinding it out, packing ourselves into a van, driving to the next venue, playing, loading in, loading out, piling into one hotel room. So we kind of have that worker mentality. So the idea that people are starting to now recognize what we've been doing is a really odd feeling, and it's also it's gratifying and and uh, in a lot of ways. But we have ingrained in us this worker mentality, so we'll just we are planning on keeping that going. So I've been listening to the the single "Stop on Repeat" for the last week, and normally when I play a song on the show and I kind of make a prediction, it normally happens. And I'm not just saying it because you're on the show, but I really think "Stop's" going to do very well in the UK charts. Thank uh, you, what, thank you. So, what kind of reception have you had from the single? Uh, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's been cool actually um, to to finally put this song out because we've been playing it live now for over a year, and it's always been uh, a song like like we we played it live for the first whole half of this uh justin timberlake tour before the song was out we still played it and every night we would get people on social media saying hey what was that what was that song you played what's it called when's it coming out and when that started happening we were like okay like the, if if this is working live and we feel as good as we do about the way we tracked it and the way the recording came out um this this could this could be something, and we're we're just really proud of the song, and we're really pumped that it's out, and really happy to hear that that you dig it. It's awesome. Well, we're going to play uh, the song on the show after the interview today. Uh, but what's next for you guys now? Can we expect an album? Can we expect a tour? What other upcoming projects are you going to be working on? I mean, like I said, we're going to keep working, so we're going to head back to the states and start writing the next uh, you know the next songs that we're excited to release. Um, I mean, before that, we have some songs teed up. Um, that we're going to release as singles basically through the end of the year, hopefully. So no album on the uh, horizon as of now, but, you know, we are music lovers and it, it's going to be something that we get done um, hopefully before 2020. <laughs> one, of the ex- one of the exciting things about our journey and our arc that we've been taking is the past three or four years we have been writing so many songs we probably have 150 something songs that are in the tank right now wow so stop is the first song that we're releasing as a single and we're planning on just cracking the door and roughly releasing a song a month and just starting the process of letting people hear all that we've been working on so are you guys actually in the uk right now we are yeah, yeah. we're in london so what do you think about the UK? What do you like most about it? And we we love the UK. We we got to play the O2 um a couple of weeks ago. We did two nights there. Um and we were here a year ago. Um we we actually played the Borderline opening for Marin Morris and just last week we played a headlining show at the Borderline that was awesome. Um being in the UK is is surreal. Uh we've sort of dreamed about playing over here for years. Uh, and to be here and be coming back consistently is, is one of the coolest things ever. We, we love this country. Well, guys, like, um, first of all, is there something in the UK that we eat that you think is really weird? Peas. <laughs> peas. There's <laughs> peas in everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's inexplicable. Well, yeah, that's true. We do have peas with a lot of things. Uh, but honestly, guys, I've got to say, discovering your music this week, I'm absolutely uh, loving your vibe. And the fact you're so passionate about songwriting... I've done a lot of research, and I know you write a lot of your own material. You have a lot of influence in what you put out, and I really do predict big things for Stop. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. No, thank you guys for joining us, uh, and hope to see you in Cheltenham in the future. It's a lovely place, and I think you would like it here. That'd be great. And hopefully get to see you do a show. Yeah, I'd love that, man. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, guys. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, Lewis. Thank you.